Somebody pointed out something very interesting they saw uh, in a BBC video report about Uyghur women in the UK and how they are uh, fighting to keep their culture alive. And they made a very good catch. And it was so good, I thought it deserved its own video. So uh, let's take a look at this video. I'm going to play through it. And I'm going to I'm going to stop right where the key points are and then I'll fast forward the rest of it and I'll put the link in the video description below so you can watch the whole thing so let's check it out if we don't teach our kids in our language our culture we will be forgotten and the nation is will be lost Okay, so uh, uh, here's the BBC repeating this lie that over a million Uyghurs have been detained. There is absolutely no evidence at all uh, suggesting that there is no evidence of any kind of genocide, not an actual genocide, which is what the Western media wants you to think is happening. Uh, but if you scrutinize them, they will fall back to claiming it is a cultural genocide where they say the Chinese government is erasing Uyghur language, their their way of pra practicing Islam, their dance, their food, everything. Everything is being erased. This is what they claim. Uh, so keep that in mind as we watch this, this. This whole video is about this woman who they depict as having fled from China, who they claim is erasing Uyghur culture. And it's like this this last dying fire in the UK, this, this woman and the people around her keeping the, the last bit of Uyghur culture alive. Keep that in mind because that's what this documentary is supposed to get across to people, this point. So let's continue watching. In my hometown, all the ladies is like gathering once a month. This one is called Chai. So here is that we uh, continue to keep up this ladies gathering and we meet each other and uh, eating Uyghur food together and uh, dancing. Uh, that's a little bit uh, feeling our from hometown. <laughs> Whenever I hear them our music and you always want to dance, this is like something very nostalgic and I think patriotic. Yes, so our music and dance is a very big part of our culture. Okay, did you, did you get that? The BBC is saying uh, this these Uyghur dances and songs. It's been declared a, a cultural heritage of humanity by UNESCO. Uh, I wonder I wonder who nominated it. This was the point that was pointed out to me. I wonder who nominated uh, Uyghur culture, its dance, its songs. Who nominated that to be recognized and protected by UNESCO? China, the, the, the nation that the West is accusing of exterminating Uyghur culture is the one that nominated Uyghur culture to be recognized and protected by UNESCO. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm making that up, here is uh, UNESCO. This is their official website, and they're talking about this particular dance, the Uyghur Makam of Xinjiang. And they're talking about uh, how China inscribed in two, 2008 on the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity uh, originally proclaimed in 2005 and they're talking about this these traditions being recognized by UNESCO uh, and then I want to point out this because this is this very hard to find information about this now but this is from the Australian National University so this is definitely not Chinese state media saying this and uh, they will talk about down here because uh, th there was a little bit of an issue getting it on the list uh, because of 
something changing at UNESCO. And then they said many officials of the state administration of cultural heritage felt let down, as did many Chinese individuals and organizers jostling for state nomination. So they were trying to get all of this onto the list. Uh, so who is this state administration of cultural heritage? Is that a, is that a Chinese organization? Of course it is. It's a it's a .gov.cn website. Uh, the State Council of the People's Republic of China. Here's information about the state administration of culture heritage. So it was China that put Uyghur culture on the list to be recognized and protected by UNESCO. And here the BBC is pretending that China is just erasing Uyghur culture and that these poor women, they're, they're stranded in the UK and they're the last ones, the last hope for preserving Uyghur culture and heritage while it is, it's fully protected by UNESCO because China put it on the list and China itself is investing uh, money in preserving it in China, in Xinjiang. Uh, here's CGTN, this is Chinese state media, Uyghur Makam seeking Xinjiang's musical roots. And it's, a, it's an entire article all about this. Why would, why would Chinese state media be covering this if they were trying to erase it? Why would they be celebrating it and talking about it? Also mentioned in the Australian National University article about, about the process of getting it onto the list was the China Academy of Art right here. And again, this is a .cn website. This is from China. So it was China who fought to get Uyghur culture onto the list, recognized and protected by UNESCO. And here's the BBC making up another one of these sob stories, completely false. What is the BBC story really about? It's about uh, this Uyghur woman who like many immigrants from many other countries and, and cultures has left their homeland, went someplace else, and they're trying to preserve their, their culture and way of life uh, so that they could teach it to their children so they know their roots. This is done everywhere in every country. There's nothing uh, suspicious or sinister about this. And uh, for her, good for her, that's great. It's great that she's doing that, but don't pretend that she's doing that because her culture is being erased back in Xinjiang, China. That is a lie. That is an absolute lie. And the BBC slipped up, not that anyone still believing the BBC and watching them will, will catch it, but uh, for, for that to get on the list for UNESCO, China itself had to nominate it and put it on that list. So I, I won't hold my breath waiting for the BBC to correct the story. The story was a deliberate lie put out there to intentionally smear China and to make something that is false look true and to make something true, which is China protecting Uyghur culture, look false. And one more thing also in the video description below will be this AP article. And this was AP going to Xinjiang. Terror and terrorism, Xinjiang eases its grip, but fear remains. And when they go to Xinjiang, all they find is China celebrating Uyghur culture. They claim that it's artificial, that it's just for tourists. But this is them backpedaling because this is a far cry from cultural genocide, which itself is a far cry from genocide genocide, which is the, the original lie that the West was trying to tell. They had no evidence. They backpedaled to cultural genocide. And now when AP goes to Xinjiang and they see Uyghur culture everywhere, they claim, well, maybe it's not cultural genocide. Maybe it's cultural museumification where they're confining it to these sort of preservation efforts. And the, the whole thing is absurd, but this is what happens when you constantly lie, your stories fall apart, and you have to fall back to a, to a new one until eventually you're left with nothing but the truth. That's our job is to get them to the truth as quickly as possible and minimize the damage their lies do in the meantime. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. I have a website, newatlas.reports. You can find and follow all of my work there. There are no paywalls. There are no ads. There never will be. Please bookmark it and share it with others. For the time being, I'm back on Twitter at Brian underscore Berletic. So you can find and follow my work there until they delete me again off of Twitter. Uh, and in the video description, again, you will find all of the, the links to everything I just covered, as well as to ways you can help support my work. And to everyone who has been helping, whether it's through Patreon month to month, 
one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my articles, that is greatly appreciated. I could not do this work without that support, so thank you. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>